Hello, welcome back to chapter two. In our final part of this chapter's lecture, part four, we will look at centripetal force. So in chapter three, we talk about circular motion and um, you saw a demonstration where I twirled a ball around my head on a string. Um, we also learned that uh, an object traveling in a circle like this undergoes an acceleration called a centripetal acceleration. And you'll recall that um, centripetal acceleration is defined as V squared, the speed squared, divided by R, where R is the radius of the circle. Now, from Newton's, uh, Newton's second law, we know that acceleration is caused by force. This is, comes from F equals MA. So the centripetal force is directed towards the center, and this is the centripetal force is what causes, in this case, the ball to go around in a circle, and that force is created by the tension of the string there. So if we take Newton's second law, F equals MA, and let's put a little C here to denote that this is a centripetal force, and the little C here tells us that this is centripetal acceleration. Well, remember that centripetal acceleration is V squared over R, so Newton's second law looks like instead of F equals MA, we can write it as F equals mv squared over r. So this is sort of a special form of Newton's second law for the case when an object is moving in a circle. And this centripetal force um, in this equation will always point towards the center of the circle. There's always something making the object travel in a circle. In this case, it's tension. We'll see later on in the course um, where we will consider gravity to be the centripetal force that keeps the planets in orbit around the sun. So let's look at an example of centripetal force. A 100 gram ball tied to a string that is 1.2 meters long is twirled around in a circle. The ball moves at two meters per second. What is the tension in the string? So from the last slide, we can write that the centripetal force is equal to MA, or better, let's write it as MV squared over R, because remember A here, the centripetal acceleration is V squared over R. So we can plug in our numbers here. The mass of the ball is 100 grams, that's 1.1 uh, kilograms. Uh, the velocity, remember, was given as two meters per second, and remember to square that here. And then we divide by the radius of the circle, which is the length of the string in this case, and that was given as 1.2 meters. So 0.1 times two squared, divided by 1.2 gives us a tension of 0.33 newtons. And that tension in the string here is what makes this ball actually travel in a circle. Here's another example of a centripetal force that you're certainly familiar with, but you may not have thought much about it until now. You're the passenger in a car traveling at 15 meters per second, which by the way is about 34 miles per hour. Uh, when the car makes a sudden left turn with a turn radius of 30 meters. So here's the picture. Um, remember, uh, the driver's over here, so you're the passenger sitting here on the right side of the car. And we're going to see this car make this left turn like this. And the radius here of this turn here, the turn radius, is 30 meters. So assuming your body mass is 70 kilograms, Describe and calculate the centripetal force acting on you. So we know our equation here, centripetal force is equal to mv squared over r. So let's plug in our numbers. The mass, your mass of your body is 70 kilograms. Your velocity is 15. And remember that's gonna be squared. And the radius here of the circle is the turn radius, which is given as 30 meters. So this calculation comes out to be 525 newtons um, and remember, a newton is about uh, one-fifth of a pound. So this force equates to about 118 pounds. Now, let's think about what this force means. How, how does this force um, acting on you? Well, what's happening here, remember that a centripetal force always pushes towards the center of the circle. So that means when you 
are in a car uh, as a passenger here, and when you make a left turn, there is something pushing you to the left. Now, what is it? Well, it's going to be the car door and the seat belt are going to push you towards the center of the circle. And if they didn't, what would happen? Well, you travel on a straight line and fly right out of the car. So your body has a tendency to keep going in a straight line like this. But what happens when the car turns, the car door over here, the side of the car, is going to maybe push against your shoulder. And if not that, then the seat belt is going to push you to the left. And also there's some friction between you and the seat and the floor of the car that's also pushing you toward the left in all cases. So that is the, the source of the centripetal force. And in fact, it's all of those forces pushing to the left that makes your body make the left turn with the car. You may have heard of the term centrifugal force, which is a little bit confusing. So we've been talking about centripetal force, which points to the center of the circle. Well, there's a, a sensation that there's a force pushing you to the outside of the circle. So for example, um, let's look at this car which is coming at us on this turn. This car is making a turn and we see the people in the car are actually leaning towards the outside, right? They're not leaning towards the center. Furthermore, if we set like a coffee cup or something up on the dashboard of the car or maybe even up here on top of the car, what would happen? Well, that coffee cup would appear to slide off the car in this direction away from the center of the circle. So what's going on here? This seems kind of contradictory because we're talking about centripetal force pointing towards the center of the circle, which would be to the right in this picture, but it looks as if there's a force pointing to the left. <clears throat> well, this sensation of an outward force is called centrifugal force, but is not a real force. In fact, physicists call this a pseudo force. Centrifugal force does not actually exist. Centripetal force is real. So how do we explain this? Well, the explanation for a centrifugal force, which again is not a real force, um, goes back to the previous problem that we did a couple slides ago where we did the uh, car making a left turn. So without the centripetal force here pushing you towards the center, you would just fly out of the car and continue going in a straight line. So there's no force pushing you out to the right of the car here. It's just your tendency to keep moving in this straight line. Well, the only force acting on you is the car, you know, the car door we talked about, the seat belt and maybe friction, all pushing towards the center of the circle. There is no force pushing you to the outside. So let's end this uh, part of the lecture. In fact, let's end this entire chapter here with our last slide and let's do a little conceptual quiz to see if you understand the concept of centripetal force and the um, non-existent centrifugal force. So let's say we're doing that demonstration again where I'm twirling the ball around my head in a, uh, with a string like this. And you know, this is, we're looking down from above. It's a bird's eye view. And all of a sudden when the ball gets right here, the string snaps, okay, because the tension was too great. So the question is, which path does the ball take? Does the ball can go straight outward in path A? Does the ball curve sort of like this, path B? Does the ball go straight but at an angle like this, path C? Does the ball go straight ahead like this, path D? Or does the ball kind of go straight and curve while it's flying, uh, which would be path E? Go ahead and pause the video and think about the correct answer here. And uh, remember, uh, I'll give you a little hint here. Well, actually, <laughs> I'll, I'll let you answer it and we'll come back and we'll discuss it. Okay, so the correct answer is D. The ball goes straight ahead when this spring uh, string breaks. Now, many students, before they've taken a physics class, would assume that the ball shoots straight out sideways because they think about this tension in the string is due to some centrifugal force pushing the ball outward. But remember, there is no force in this direction. 
Okay, once the string breaks, this ball, which was moving in this direction here, is just gonna keep flying in that direction along a straight path along path D. So that is the uh, end of chapter four on forces and Newton's laws of motions. Uh, we will uh, continue our course with uh, the next chapter soon. See you then, bye.